Longtime colleague Blake Bulletproof Troop, and you're watching LXF8 The Return. You've waited long enough, it's time to go lights out. Let's get right to our first fight of the card in the Bantamweight division. Patrick Cornett looks for his first win as a professional mixed martial artist, along the crease across the cage from him, making his pro debut, Diego Rodriguez Gonzalez. Let's go to the tail of the tape. You can see a slight age difference between these two uh, competitors. Patrick Cornett is six years the elder of Diego Gonzalez. Weight is very similar and experience is very similar. So we don't have a lot to go off of, but I expect both these guys to get in here and get ready to scrap. With that said, let's head into the cage. With that. Uh, it looks like we're gonna have to. So I was watching Cornette warm up a little bit earlier and he has an extremely fluid movement. His ability to move around the ring, switch stances, throw kicks and a variety of other strikes. As I said, in an extremely fluid manner. I believe he's gonna be able to set something big up by using this unpredictable motion. Both of these guys here new to the mixed martial arts professional cage, looking to make a statement here in the lights out cage. A lot to prove here. One big thing that I like about watching guys without a ton of experiences is typically they've done pretty well in any fights they've been in in their life. So when they get into this cage, they're typically extremely confident. This is probably the biggest stage that either competitor wants a debuter. And his opponent, Gonzalez, who does have a fight, did not fight, I don't know where he fought, but it probably was not a stage as big as lights out extreme fighting. All right, that in mind, let's head into the LXF cage to Barry Egan with our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to an incredible night of world-class MMA here at the beautiful Riverside Municipal Auditorium in Riverside, California. Tonight, Fubo TV in association with Family First Life, Everbowl and Dave and Busters bring you LXF8 the return all of tonight's action is sanctioned by the california state athletic commission the commissioner peter viegas the executive officer mr andy foster the physicians at cage side this evening dr Tariq khan and dr kelly tucker the judges at cage side this evening rafael davis chris lieben frank trigg and jonathan romero the timekeeper this evening is jill trigg Riverside, here we go. Introducing first for our first three by five minute round in the Bantamweight division. He's fighting out of the blue corner to my right. He weighed in at 138.6 pounds, fighting in his second professional fight. Here is Patrick Cornett. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner to my left. Wearing the black trunks, he weighed in at 135.8 pounds. He's making his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Diego Rodriguez Gonzalez. Gonzalez looks like he is ready to get in here and scrap. He has just been staring Cornette down since he got inside the cage. Cornette is on the other side, looking extremely relaxed, moving around and breathing, because he's been here before. This is the first time Gonzalez has been inside of a cage for a professional fight. So this is new to him somewhat. Although Cornette only has one fight, he is significantly more calm appearing right now. Yeah, he's made that professional walk at least once, so he's got a chance to shed those nerves on his first walk, but didn't go his way the first time. And today, Cornette looks for that first win here as a mixed martial artist in a pro cage. You know, I think that the first fight doesn't always say a ton because, like I said, it's a brand new experience. I think that the comfortableness of Cornet is going to lead to the fluidity of the strikes that's going to set something up big for him. There we go. Round one. These fights scheduled for three five-minute rounds here live on Fubo TV. So the first thing that I noticed, you can see Cornet is coming out in a southpaw while Gonzalez is, is orthodox, meaning Cornet's right leg's forward and Gonzalez's left leg's forward. This changes the dynamic for striking where the rear strike, whether it's a rear hand or kick, is significantly more damaging. We just saw Cornette throw one head kick and Gonzalez just kind of blocked it but you cannot take a shin to the forearm that many times throughout the fight. Both guys still sizing each other up here looking to see who's going to strike first. Oh, a nice kick to the midsection there by our red corner fighter, Diego Gonzalez. So one thing we're seeing Diego Gonzalez do is continually circling to his left. And the reason he's doing that is he's moving away from Cornette's power. We've seen Cornette throw one strike thus far with real authority, and it was that head kick. And you can see Gonzalez continually moving away, still veering to the left-hand side to try and get away from the power of Cornette. 
Cornette sees it now, and he's starting to throw right strikes. There was a leg kick because you're seeing Gonzalez walk to the left, so chopping in on that kick again, we're seeing it. And that's because Gonzalez is continuing. Oh, big shots by Cornette. See, that's what I meant by the fluidity of the movement. He's kind of dancing around and picking his shots, but he's moving so much that he's getting able to create a lot of momentum and throw something big. And I think that goes into the comfort. Look at how comfortable he is in there moving. Gonzalez definitely trying to find his place there in the cage, trying to find a spot for those shots. And so I think the big difference... Oh, oh, oh big, oh, left, big hand. left hand! Oh, this and might this be fight, This might be over. No, but Frank Trigg makes you finish a guy. Frank has refereed me several times, and he gives fighters a fighting chance. And Gonzalez is not quitting. But Carl oh! with the big slam. Wow. I'd like to see Cornette just hold him here. He doesn't need to rush anywhere. He has plenty of time to work with 310 left on the clock. I think he needs to sit his hips heavy on top of uh, Gonzalez here and start raining down shots with his left hand, which is his dominant hand. He just needs to make sure his left leg stays safe from any rolling submissions. Cornette had a big moment there in the first round. Could have finished the fight, and here we are back on our feet. You know, I actually give him a lot of respect for that. He's definitely winning the stand-up fight, and I think a lot of that's coming from the range as well. He's controlling the distance between him and his opponent. So instead of fighting on the ground, he's just like, I'm going to get back up and keep beating you where I've been beating you thus far. And within minutes of LXF8, the return, we have big moments, big action here on Fubo TV. Whoa, these boys are starting to bang. And this is what, this with the is what Cornette needs, his needs to avoid, though. He needs to get, avoid exchanges. He needs to get in, pick his shots, damage his opponent, and then get back out instead of turning into a big exchange. Great takedown. Now he has passed to side control, so he has passed both of Gonzalez's legs. Now he can get to a more dominant position to strike. He could even potentially slide his right knee over to mount here and get an extremely dominant fight-ending position, potentially. Two minutes left on the clock, plenty of time to work. So as you can see, both guys are moving closer to the cage. When you can jam your opponent's head against the cage, it makes it significantly harder for him to move his head or his body so you can land big strikes just like that. And Cornette, again, all right, you want to get back up and bang some more? Let's do it, my man. Wow, Gonzalez surviving a, some big trouble early in this round, and now he's on the attack. You know, every time Gonzalez moves forward, Cornette just moves back out. And you can see Cornette picking when he wants there to be exchanges. Oh, and he lands a knee! Oh, and a big shot to the midsection. Wow, big one to the breadbasket. Yeah, you, so Gonzalez is getting some of these barrages coming forward, especially if you can get Cornette to cover and stand for a second. We'll see in a variety of uh, punches and bunches coming out of Gonzalez in the counterattack. Cornette throwing a flailing, spinning roundhouse kick goes nowhere. But you know, that's what I mean by the fluidity. You don't know what he might throw and the kick coming that way. He's moving, he has an awkward motion, changing stances. It's a really easy to hide a big flashy spinning kick or something when you move like this. And I saw him doing capoeira when he was warming up earlier. I would love to see a capoeira kick here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 8. Cornette again using his footwork to try and get out, but Gonzalez doing a great job of using the cage to cut him off, landing some strikes, but Cornette's able to get back out and get to the center of the ring. Gonzalez truly taking over the second half of this round. Might be a toss-up of a round at the end of the uh, round. I don't know how the judges are going to call this one. You know, it's always tough with judges. That's why I'm glad I'm at the commentary table. I just have to talk about the fighting. You see some pumping to the jab out by Cornette. It makes me think he's setting up that rear leg kick again. Oh, big takedown by Cornette! Oh, and some noise! He drags um, Gonzalez over to his corner. You can see his coach in the corner, two feet away from Cornette's head, explaining exactly what he needs to do. Gonzalez trying to look for the guillotine here, but he's not going to get it. Cornette needs to keep his hips attached to Gonzalez's hips and maybe even drag him out. There's not much time left in the round, so just staying on top and making his opponent grind his way. But great job. Fight. Oh! Oh, and he landed in the head and arm there, given there wasn't time on the clock, but he's looking for the finish. Wow, that was a very, very eventful first round here on LXF8 in the bantamweight division. I don't know how you'd call the first round there. We had a big moment. Let's take a uh, look at the replays here. So I gotta give it to Cornette. I think Cornette landed some of the bigger strikes. He had big left hand, so... And then a big slam out of Cornette. I think these were probably the two biggest moments of the fight. And that rear, those rear attacks, another takedown by Cornette. Cornette's able to stay on top of him, land some damage, let it back up. And here's another one. This is three, four big slams, dragging him back to his corner, which shows the uh, fight IQ that he has to take the fight to where his coach is, and he can get one-on-one -on -one coaching right there on top of his opponent. 
Wow, both men in trouble in the first round, and both men finding big moments. Gonzalez surviving trouble and then taking over, showing a lot of heart and skill there in the cage here. LXFA, round two among us here. Frank Trigg taking a look at both fighters, getting ready to get the action restart. Both guys looking relatively fresh coming out of the first round for the lack of experience they have. That's one of the things we see with with newer guys is they get tired fast. They have the adrenaline dump. This is on TV. They've come out and they're like, oh, oh, and they spend so much. But both these guys have been doing a fantastic job of, of preserving their energy so they're still offensive while still, whoa, big check hook, rear check hook by Cornette. I think this rear, it's either going to be a rear left hand or a rear head kick by Cornette that's going to end up finishing this fight. Oh! Or a rear knee, some type of rear attack in this open stance. And another takedown where Cornette ends up on top. Sometimes guys like, oh, he grabbed the cage a little bit there. Maybe not enough to really change things. And Cornette with another trip from behind. Let's see if he slides to mount right here. He could potentially get himself to an even more dominant position if he's able to get his right knee over the torso of Gonzalez. Again, it looks wide open. If he just pops that right knee up, knee on belly, or even slides all the way over to mount, he has four minutes to work in this dominant position. But even here in side control, he has submission possibilities. He has striking opportunities. And he's grinding on a Gonzalez who has to move all of Cornette's weight anytime he wants to do anything. Gonzalez trying to find a way out of this position here. Yeah, but he's got this head and arm. Yes. Uh, he was baiting him with the that arm. That looks he was tight. Waiting. He might get this tap. I want to see. That looks tight. If he goes a little more ear to ear like this and then turns his left hip in or sinks it down. Oh, and Gonzalez. Let's see if who's able to get this top position. Good defense they by Gonzalez. They need to battle, right? This is a fight for the heart right here. Who wants to get on top? Cornette should. Yes. And if I were him, I would almost bail from the sub and try and get pop up, land some more strikes, but he has so much time to work. And when you have a guy's arm crossed over his face like that, it is incredibly hard to breathe. You're being smothered right there. You're already out of breath because you're fighting somebody. Your adrenaline's pumping. It's a terrible place to be in. Even though he's not getting beat up, it sucks. This is like something your big brother used to do to you. You're watching LXF8, the return live on Fubo TV, commencing from the Riverside Municipal Auditorium in the Los Angeles area. Very calmness, uh, or very calm uh, dispose, or predisposition out of Cornette still. Wow, on the back now. But he has his feet crossed, which is in the, oh, he uncrossed him. You know, for a Capoeira striker, he has some really impressive grappling here in the second round of this fight. You know, we chatted with his coach a little bit before the fight, and his coach was like, I'm not really sure what you are the most, because he's very well-rounded. He did say striking was probably the strong point. I think fight IQ might be the strong point, because you can't teach someone being coachable and able to listen to a coach on the sideline, pick a guy up and take him over there, or especially to stay calm in a battle. Oh, we might have an arm here. Oh, but he's got full mount with two and a half minutes left on the clock. Gonzalez in big trouble here. Yeah, Gonzalez did a good job of being able to get uh, get him back and somehow get top position off Cornette. And now Gonzalez throwing hammer fist and oh. a big kick of his own. He, yeah, he almost threw that kick. Had he landed that, that would have been an illegal kick. He caught himself just in time. Yeah, and I, I think that was a smart move there. He did the same thing earlier when they were on the ground. He was about to throw it a 12-6 elbow, and he stopped himself right in the middle of it. So smart move second time here in the fight by Gonzalez. So both guys, you can tell, there's a little bit, are a little more tired now. And again, we're seeing Cornette come out and testing the range. He knows that G Gonzalez is tired. Gonzalez doing a good job of keeping his hands up, but that gets exhausting. Cornette's just in here, coming in, getting quite close to the range, then back oh. out, looking for his, oh! Big head kick. And again, the rear strike in this, oh, whoa, another takedown oh. by Cornette. Being on an over, uh, Overreaching Gonzalez. Cornette's and again, grappling may be the difference maker in this fight. I almost think the ability to switch it up. You know, it's not necessarily it's being crazy. It's that he's using his grappling at the right times, using his striking at the right times, finding the ranges that he needs to be at. And again, Fight IQ planted his opponent three, four feet from where his coach is. You can see right there, just behind Cornette's head, you see Cornette's coach telling him what to do. Cornette even just searches his coach, he's like, bro, don't let him know, I know, I know. Don't tell him what I need to do. It's, it's, they're on the same page. The coach doesn't even have to tell him where, where to go from here. I mean, that's a great bond to have with a coach where it's like, I'm, I'm already on the same page as the coach, I get it. Here you can see Gons or, um, Cornette kind of grinding his forehead down into his opponent's chin. We call that the unicorn horn. It makes it so you can, if you can control the direction a guy's chin goes, you can control the direction his entire head moves. Control the direction his head moves, you can entire, control his entire body just about. But this is a bad spot where Gonzalez needs to exactly open his guard, create space, and try and get back to his feet. Inside 30 seconds here in the second round of this Bantamweight fight, 
This is a losing position right here on bottom, but it's Cornette's not making it easy and he's continuing pressure. Great. Whoa, he's trying to step to mount. Not a whole lot of time left on the clock, but he's grinding Gonzalez down. And I think we're going to see this grinding pace on Gonzalez underneath really impact his conditioning in round three. Great round for Cornette here. Might be an uphill battle in the third round for Gonzalez if he doesn't make something happen. I agree 100%, and if I was Cornette's corner, I'd say keep doing the same thing. Be careful of the big exchanges. When that starts going there, we're gonna drop for a takedown, just like he's been doing the whole fight thus far. We saw him do it several times in the first round and several times in the second round. And that mixing it up, in my opinion, is really what he's been taking away the fight. And let's go to our replays here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. You see Cornette here with a big slam takedown. So this is another one of those rear trips that he did. He landed that in the first round. We see him landing in the second. Now here, jumping over to get this head and arm. You see him plant the arm in there, jump through and try and cinch it. Unable to. And here, Gonzalez, no quit in him. He, uh, Cornette goes for the arm bar. Gonzalez creates a scramble and almost comes out on top. But this has been the story of the fight right here. Exchange is happening. Cornette dropped, changing levels and blasting in for the takedown. We're heading into the third round of this fight. It looks like it, it's really hard to call the first round, but Cornette did have a big moment where he dropped him and almost got into him in, in a submission. So that may be the bigger moment in the first round, but again, you cannot count on you know an opinion when, you, when you're going to the judges. So this third round is huge for both of these men. Both of them need to make a big statement here. I agree 100%. Both these guys need to be fighting to win this last round or even finish the fight. Tell them I love it when, when two guys get out and fight each other. Coming into the third round, you got a lot of respect for the guy. Um, I, I, I got to disagree. I'm not a big fan. If it's a five-round fight and it's a barn burner, I'm okay with it in the fifth. But but not not a fight like this in the third. Let's let's get into the fight right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, but you've never been in the cage, so your opinion carries a little less value in that area. And that's why I remember what happened yesterday. Yeah, that's true. Oh, big left hand. Oh, and Cornette's swinging for the lights. Whoa! Oh! And Gonzalez, Gonzalez with the receipt. But this is what I think Cornette needs to avoid are these exchanges. He needs to drop levels and go for the takedown when it happens exactly like this. And he's got he's got his opponent down again on at least the side of the near his coach. Right here in our corner, you can see Gonzalez trying to kind of rest on him. But Cornette's co right shoulder is just driving Gonzalez down. He is stuck in this position. And you can see he even has a foot grab. I can't see because of the cage panel extremely well. But fantastic top pressure right now by Patrick Cornett. I'd like to see him potentially drag the hips back, lock it, S grip his hands behind the hips, drag his hips out so that Gonzalez's back is now on the cage and his head's trapped. And Gonzalez is doing the right things by trying to get back and wall walk up. And Gonzalez looks like he's a half guard now, he does. But I don't think it matters because a half guard almost traps when you're against the cage here, you lose a lot of your sweep value that the half guard gives you. So Gonzalez has got to try and get, escape a little bit, pop up to his knees or get his back against the cage and wall walk up. But as long as he's stuck here on his side, here he is, now he's on his knees. Now he can start fighting to get back to his feet. But the thing is you've got a Patrick Cornette on your back trying to choke you and punch you in the face. So it's not as easy as it sounds. Whoa, whoa, these are the exchanges he needs to avoid. Drop for a takedown is what I would recommend him to do here. Frank Schrick giving them all the space they need to make the action happen. Gonzalez doing a fantastic job of fighting out of a bad position and then bringing the fight right to Patrick Cornette. We're about halfway, three minutes left in the final round. This is, whoa! That rear hand Cornette is throwing. Whoa, wobble oh, yeah. Gonzalez. Stumbled him. Oh, and a big oh, knee to the midsection. That might to the liver. That might oh, be, oh, it looks done. like he's about to be stopped. He's done. But Fred makes you finish that. And this one is all over. Man. Wow, fantastic finish by Patrick Cornette. <laughs> and a little stumble on the celebration, but a well-deserved victory. And Gonzalez gets up with a victory of his own. And a ton of respect for Gonzalez, because he is a warrior. He got out of some bad positions and continued to bring the fight until the fight got finished. Fantastic performance, fantastic debut by Gonzalez, and fantastic win by Patrick Cornett, getting his first finish and his first professional win. Let's take a quick look at our replays here as soon as we, our producers bring them over to us. Here we are on the Extreme Extreme. So here's that knee, it looked like it went to the liver, and that's what really hurt him, bam! 
And then after that knee to the chin, he didn't want him bent. Patrick Corgan was nice. Look at Frank. Really? I, you want me to finish him? Okay, I'll keep hitting him. I guess he's not familiar with Frank Trigg's referee style. And oh, look at that big knee. shot to the midsection. I mean, and then he followed. That tie the clinch. Boom. Knee. I can't tell if that was to the chin or the sternum, but it blasted him, and he was done right there. Frank Trigg's a fighter, so he made him land a few more strikes before stopping the fight, which I like and agree with. But man, he was done after those two knees. Wow, what an incredible first fight of the night. And let's uh, take a quick break here, and we'll be back with the official decision in just a few minutes. Live on Fubo TV after a big finish in the Bantamweight division. Let's go to Barry Eget with the official decision. Riverside, the time, two minutes, 22 seconds into round number three for the winner. By way of knockout, Patrick Cornett. <laughs> Sibley Skulls, the very talented Sibley Skulls, will be doing post fight interviews. So, Sibley, I'll uh, hand it over to you. Thank you, Barry. Okay, let's go. Patrick, where's our camera, guys? Right here. First of all, I talked to you yesterday. This man flew to Vegas to work. You DJed until 4 in the morning, got on a 7 a.m. flight. Six months ago, you cut alcohol out of your diet and your life. You said, any time I've lost a fight, I have beat myself. What do we feel right now taking this win? Oh, man. Um, three hours of sleep. I turned the fuck up last night in a nightclub. Um, made my way back down here with you guys to entertain. Um, yeah, I stopped drinking like six months ago because as a DJ in nightlife, alcohol is literally like water. So I was doing way too much drinking. I wanted to dedicate myself to the fans and um, to the crowd, the fighting, and all the little kids out there who feel like you have to drink or do other shit to entertain or fucking, um, excuse my language, but, uh, to fit in, you can be cool. I had a 4.0 in high school, 3.5 in college, and I was one of the most popular motherfuckers in Kentucky, so I'm here to let all you kids know. Stay in school, entertain, and give it your all. I love you guys. Riverside, give it up for Patrick right now. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
That was an incredible kickoff fight for the return of LXF8. You'll expect to see the action all year right here on Fubo TV. And I'm joined now by the promoter, the head, the man behind the magic, former NFL superstar, three-time all-star linebacker, and, and, a, and also an undefeated mixed martial artist himself, <laughs> Sean Merriman. Congratulations on your most recent success. Appreciate it, man. It's, uh, it, it's, it's great, great to be here in Riverside. Um, you know, first time here, not the last time at all, and see the people come out here. Uh, got the Riverside Warrior. I can't wait to see. But, you know, Patrick here, who flew to Vegas to work and come back, and I looked at him, I said, hey, man, are you going to be prepared? Are you going to get enough rest? Uh, he walked in, man, like a champ, fought, you know, great rounds, gave the people what they wanted to see, man, and now I told him he'd go and get some rest now. That was an incredible finish and a lot of heart, a lot of skill there today, and that could have been gone anyway. That third round was really the decision maker, and he didn't leave it to the judges, which was very impressive. Now, Sean, after a short hiatus, the return of LXF, we expect to see action all year on Fubo TV. Tell us about that. Yeah, we just uh, extended our partnership with Fubo. Um, it's been great. We have you know one of the best fight promotions coming up, and mainly, guys, we want to give these up-and-coming fighters an opportunity to showcase their talent, right? I mean, it's a lot of up-and-coming and skilled fighters that aren't getting a real opportunity. And we want them to have an opportunity here with Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Also, getting a chance to transition some of these former athletes, some of these former NFL guys, some of these former rugby, wrestling. Come on over to Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We got something for you. Great partnership with football. You're going to be seen. And uh, hell, man, this, this excitement in here, it was almost hard for me not to get in the cage myself, man. I feel that good. The energy, the atmosphere is excellent. It's extravagant. Now tell us a little bit about what is going to separate LXF Lights Out Extreme Fighting from the rest of the promotions around the country. Yeah, for one, we're, we're you know one of the fastest growing. Uh, we came back, we had a long guy. It is now we get a chance to have these type of fights. We've got six great fights lined up tonight. Um, you know, fans and people are still walking in right now, but it's, it's going to be great, man. We're looking to have a big fight every six plus uh, weeks or so and just keep loading it up and keep lining it up. You know, unfortunately, I'm not getting a chance to watch my Chargers uh, uh, play tonight in the playoff game, but uh, I'm keeping up, keep keeping tabs and uh, just a great, great night, man. I'm excited. Well, go Chargers. With that said, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with our second fight in the welterweight division right here at LXF8.
Welcome back to Fubo TV. It's we are going lights out here tonight. Commencing live from the Los Angeles area Riverside Municipal Auditorium. I'm Mark Charles, alongside with me, Bulletproof Blake True. Former NBA superstar Gilbert Arenas and King of NBA Twitter Josiah Johnson talk to the biggest names in basketball on No Chill. Check them out Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fubo Sports and anytime on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We now head into the welterweight division. Octavian Trumbo looks for a second win as a pro fighter. His opponent, Turner Moneybag Williams. And now, the tale of the tape. Uh, sorry about that, folks. No tail of the tape. I grew up in West Virginia, population like 10,000. Was getting in a lot of trouble, you know. I found a way to turn my negative into a positive, and I'm here. I've been doing boxing since I was like six years old. I turned professional when I was 25. I got a lot of amateur fights under my belt. I probably got at least 75 amateur fights. The smartest way to win, know where you are in that cage, ring awareness. As long as I know where I'm in that ring, I'm fine. This is it, this is my life. I live for this, die for it, all that. This is the life I chose. My opponent has a lot of boxing fights. Uh, that's about all uh, I know about him. It's business. My fight style comes with a lot of violence. And I'm trying to hurt the guy very badly. Broken bones, doesn't matter to me. I'm just gonna go in and fight. I'm a well-rounded fighter, but I prefer striking. There's no bad blood, but it doesn't matter if you're my friend or not, I can commit a lot of violence onto somebody, because if I don't do it, they're gonna do it to me. So that's the mindset. If it's kill or be killed, then I'm gonna do the killing. Let's step aside for a short break here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We'll be back with our fighter walkouts in the welterweight division. to LXF8 Live on Fubo TV. We're heading into the welterweight division. Octavian Trumbo looks for a second win as a pro fighter. His opponent out of Ohio, Turner Moneybag Williams. And let's head into the cage for our official, official announcements. Walk into the cage now, Octavia Trumbo, record is one and two, and he looks to even it out here against Turner Moneybag Williams. 
He mentioned in his interview, it is either kill or be killed, and you could not be any more accurate to what goes on inside this cage. You better be ready to get in there and hurt the guy standing across from you, because that's exactly what he's trying to do. And Trumbo knows that and says that he's coming here to put his opponent away. Another guy with not a ton of experience coming out and making a television debut and looking extremely calm. A lot of guys are breathing heavy here, a little scared. These are the bright lights. They don't get much bigger than lights out. And this kid looks calm and collect, which is a big thing about staying conscious and cerebral while inside of the cage. This is a smart man strategy game. There is a little caveman-ness to fighting. But at the same time, it is a chess game. And so being able to stay calm and use your head is a huge advantage. And Turner Williams will be making his way down to the cage here in just a moment. Turner Williams coming from Cincinnati, Ohio. And this man has had a long storied life. And I tell you, this man has a blessing to be here. Coming out of a very challenging life in Cincinnati, did five years in federal prison, and he really promised himself that he wasn't going to let that system suck him in. And here he is as a professional fighter, making a walk here in Los Angeles. That's a, quite a step from being in federal prison, doing hard time. He told me about an old man that came up to him in prison and said, young man, I see something in you, and I'm not going to let this prison eat you up. And, he did his time, he got out, and here he is. Awesome, and he has really been putting his foot to the pedal when it comes to competing. 72, 72 amateur fights, unheard of. It's an incredible amount of experience to get into the cage. Even if they're amateur fights, that is an incredible amount of times to make that walk, to cut weight, to make weight, and be in there fighting somebody. So he is getting into this cage with a tremendous amount of experience. And again, cool, calm, and collect. But I'm less surprised by a guy who has 70 plus appearances being calm than a guy with four appearances. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. So Mark, one of the things that really stands out to me is the five inch height difference between these two guys. Turner Williams is significantly longer. I wish we had an arm reach to see, but he has long arms on top of a long frame. However, we see a seven-year difference in age between Octavian Trumbo and two, uh, Turner Williams. Let's see how it plays out inside of the Lights Out cage. We'll head into the cage now with Barry Egan for the official introduction. Riverside, here we go. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. The man in charge of the action once the bell sounds, Mr. Jonathan Romero. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner to my right. Wearing the solid black trucks, he weighed in at 168.2 pounds, fighting in his fourth professional fight. Here is Octavian Trumbo. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner to my left. He weighed in at 175 pounds even, fighting in his sixth professional fight. Please welcome Turner, Moneybag Williams. Moneybag Williams with five fights, but no wins. Looking to get that first one as a pro. You know, something that's been going on right here, right before the fight started, Octavian Trumbull's just been sitting there ready to fight. And I don't know what was going on with Turner's trunks, but two commission officials were looking at it. They're letting him fight now, so it must have been nothing. But the immediate seconds before the fight starts, his head isn't thinking about the fight, it's thinking about his shorts. When you see Octavian Trumbull on the other side of the cage, 100% focused on throwing down right now. This fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting Live on Fubo TV. Alongside with me, Blake Bulletproof Troop, and I'm Mark Charles, live on Fubo.tv. Again, so this is what I'm talking about where the officials are looking at. I can't, is it gloves or is it pants? Or there's something with his attire that they're, I can't see what, what they're doing with the tape. But here's the thing, uh, like I mentioned, Octavian Trumbo is still thinking about fighting. Turner Williams, is, there's something going on, and it's not his fault, but his head's not thinking about getting in here and potentially fighting to the death right now. And Octavian Trumbull, 100%, is in that mind state. And in my opinion, your mind state is one of the biggest advantages you can have going into a cage. Octavian Trumbull looks ready. Turner Williams looks ready, but his head wasn't in it for the last three minutes. Let's see how this plays out. I see Octavian Trumbull coming in hot. Round number one is on its way. And Octavian Trumbo quickly closes the dis. Whoa! 
Blasts him with a big head kick, but Turner's able to turn it into a takedown. Let's see these. Oh, great sprawl by Trumbo. Takes the back. Oh, big ground and pound from the back by Trumbo. He said it is kill or be killed, and he is in here trying to kill Turner oh Williams. Oh, my. And wow, 22 brutal. second stoppage by Octavian Trumbo. Oh, and it looks like his shoulder might be out of its socket. He may have a problem there. They might. That's that's a bad, bad finish there, getting beaten, and then also some problem with his shoulder. It looks like those hammer fists really, really laid into his head and also might have popped his shoulder out of his socket. You know, shoulders can be really delicate. I didn't, I'd didn't. i have to see the entire fight again because they both went for takedowns. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to reach around and sprawl back. There's a variety of things that could have potentially caused that. Yeah. But like I was saying in the pre-fight, Octavian Trumbo was cut red and looked like he was ready to get in there and kill. And Turner Williams, not his fault, whatever that was going on with his gear, but his head was out of the game for a second. And as soon as that bell rung, you could see that difference in mindsets as Octavian Trumbo came over and started putting his hands on Turner Williams. And in 22 seconds, gets the TKO finish. Wow, that was that was brutal. That was incredible. I'd like to see the replay. We'll watch the entire fight. Here comes a replay. We're gonna replay it. Here's the sprawl. The Turner Williams taking the shot. Ends up uh, Octavian Trumbull hits the sprawl and goes to mountain and just starts landing some vicious ground him on the shoulder. Looks like it's okay here. I want to see where. So here's the full fight. There's the takedown, Kai catching the kick. Here's where I could have seen the shoulder popping out. It's, it's holding on there during that sprawl, but it's hard to tell. And I'm not even, his arms look all right here. I'm not sure. Big shots by Octavian Trumbo though. Great top position, keeping the position and landing dominant strikes, getting the finish. Wow, great performance. That was an incredible second fight here. We'll step aside for a short break. We'll be back with our official decisions at LXF8 live on Fubo. Welcome back to Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Let's get our official decision. Here's Barry Egot. Referee Jonathan Romero stepped in to stop the bout. 21 seconds into round number one for the winner. By way of TKO, Octavian Chumbo. Let's go to Sibley with our post fight interview with our winner. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, Octavian, uh, yesterday I had many lengthy interviews with the other fighters here. Yours is very short and to the point. You can tell by your demeanor what you wanted to do. Your words were, just try to kill him when you get in here. 
21 seconds. Is this the quickest knockout that you've had? I beat, it by one, I beat my last one by one second, so a new record. This is a new record for you? Yep. So you accomplished exactly what you wanted to do today in the cage. How do you feel right now? Pretty good. A man of very few words. And again, but it's all right. What happened to the hand? I broke it. But we just keep it moving. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sibley. And that was a quite a brutal finish there. I really, really have to uh, find out what's going on with Turner. So there was Trumbo coming out, throwing that big head kick that Turner initially caught that ended up leading him being in this bottom position. And I'm wondering if that's where he potentially hurt his shoulder, grabbing the leg as it got sprawled back and his arms getting pushed over his head. All right, let's take a short break here. We'll be right back with LXF8 live on Fubo TV with our third fight of the evening. Which Lights are bright in the Los Angeles area here at the Riverside Municipal Auditorium here at LXF8. Our next bout will feature the lightweights, Matt Kenning and Ryan Lilly. Our next bout is scheduled for three five minute rounds in the 155 pound lightweight division where Matt Kendall Our next bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the 155-pound division. Matt Denning versus Ryan Lilly. Training for about 20 years now. This is probably my last year in mixed martial arts. I always show up and I show up every time the phone rings. I don't steer away from a fight. I think I bring more intensity because these are my last fights. Like these are like what they're gonna really remember me by. When I go out to fight, I'm there to put on a show for the fans, the people that paid good money to sit there up close, don't wanna feel some blood hit on them. It's a fight, anything can happen, but I know me better than I know anyone on the planet and I know what I'm going to do. 
I predict that I'll have a first round TKO. This is the first time ever in my career that I fought someone shorter than me. I think that'll give me the advantage to stick to my game plan and fight my fight and make him fight the way that I want to fight. He has advantage on height and weight, but I have the advantage everywhere else. I was on the last lights out card, you know, one by knockout. You know, I didn't get the name the lion for no reason, you know. I'm making my lightweight debut. I normally fight at bantamweight and featherweight. I'm like, what else am I gonna do this weekend? Like, I could be at home or I could go punch someone in the face and make some money. I'm like, that sounds like a lot better plan. Start 2023 with a bang. to LXF8. The return, we'll have our fighter walkouts and we will see some lightweight action here at LXF8. Welcome back to Alex F8 here on Fubo TV, our next fight in the lightweight division. Our first fighter to walk out will be Patrick Cornett. Excuse me, our next fighter walking out, Matt Kendall Denning. So Matt Denning said that these are some of his last fights and that he's gonna come out here and put it all on the line because he believes that your last few fights are really what your legacy is remembered by. And he wants to be remembered as an entertaining fighter. So he said he's gonna come out here and hopefully blood's gonna be flying on people in the crowd. He's expecting a first round TKO against Ryan the Lion, Lily. He's coming in here with a pretty big black eye. If you look at his right eye, yesterday at weigh-ins, it was pretty greenish and bluish and purplish. Probably a week or so old, but that was probably pretty solid shot to the face. And it makes me wonder how much damage or mileage he took in his 20-year career, including the camp leading up to this. But it also says that this dude gets in there and trains seriously. He's been putting in the work and having hard sparring with teammates. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword sometimes, putting in good hard work because you do get the mileage. But it is his last year fighting, he said, and he is coming in here to make a memorable statement. And he makes his way into the cage for the 26th time as a pro fighter. And with that said, one of the most popular fighters at LXF will now make his way down to the cage, Ryan the Lion Lily.
So Ryan Lilly is a stud here in Southern California. He has fought for just about every promotion and has wins in just about every promotion. He comes out, he's a bass rooting guy, trains at Elite MMA, so his striking is fantastic. He also predicts a first round finish. I've seen Ryan fight a lot of times and I have fought on cards with Ryan. Ryan is a killer. The Lion is not just a nickname. He comes in there and treats that cage like it's his and tries to eat his opponents alive. Both guys are looking for knockouts, so this should make for an extremely entertaining fight. And chances are someone's going high south. And the notes read 10 and 9, but Lily is actually 11 and 9. So he has 11 wins as a pro fighter here, making his way into the cage. Ryan is a tough guy. He has fought a lot of very tough guys on the regional circuit at a variety of different high level shows. So a uh, 9 and 11, or 11 and 9 record isn't really bad when you start looking at who'd you fight. You know, because a guy could be 10 and 0, but if they fought all bums, they might not be a 10 and 0 stud fighter like they appear on paper. Ryan Lilly's record might not be the best, just like mine isn't. But Ryan Lilly is a killer, and he's ready to get in here and get to the action. All right, let's head over to the tail of the tape. A very, very storied tail of the tape. So one of the biggest differences that we see is the amount of fights. It's not extremely significant. 8 and 17, 10 and 9, 25 fights to 19. Both these guys are very experienced, very similar age, very similar height, very similar weight. But I think Ryan Lilly's experience with tougher opponents gives him the edge going into this fight. And now our official introductions from our very own Barry Egan. Riverside, here we go. This battle is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. The man in charge of the action once the bell sounds, Mr. Frank Trigg. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner to my right, wearing the black trunks with the gray trim. He weighed in at 155.8 pounds, fighting in his 26th professional fight. Here is Matt Kendall Denny. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner to my left, wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 155 pounds even. He is 11 and nine. Let's hear it for Ryan, Lion, Lily. Man, so these dudes have not broke eye contact since they got in here face off against each other in the, in the cage, which typically means both these dudes are ready to get in each other's face. I am excited for this one, Mark. High intensity on both sides of the cage, and uh, Kendall coming all the way up from Maine, uh, bringing the cold down with him. It's freezing outside here in L.A. Is that where the cold came from? Because it is freezing outside. But I think what we're going to do is see somebody get put on ice right now in this cage. This one's scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the lights out extreme fighting cage. And Denning immediately trying to get in and touch Ryan. Ryan's doing a good job of moving around. Oh, right hand. Oh, these dudes got right into exchanging and Ryan Lilly separates, which I think was a smart thing for him to do. He's a very smart fighter and if he keeps himself at a distance and picks his shots and learns how Denning wants to fight, I think he's gonna be able to figure him out. And Denning double underhooks, trying to drive Ryan against the cage. You can see him trying to fight his left arm in to get that underhook, but Ryan fought, they're pummeling back and forth for it. Whoever has both underhooks typically has a slightly better advantageous position in the standing grappling. You can see Denning now, he has one underhook, and oh, Ryan dropping for the double leg. And then and Denning, great job of threatening the guillotine enough to get Ryan to bail on the takedown attempt. LXF8, the return live on Fubo Sports, Fubo.tv. You'll see the action all year here on Fubo Sports. Oh, well, let's see if he gets his guillotine. I mean, he's got this shoulder up. I'd like to see Ryan. I don't think he'll finish this, especially as Ryan's got that form across the face. So Ryan now in a great position, almost the middle of the cage, able to do some ground and pound here from the guard. Let's see what he does. You can see Denning has a very aggressive bottom guard game. Went for the guillotine, was looking for an arm bar there. Now Ryan's giving him a little pressure from this open guard position. I'd like to see him start chopping at Denning's legs a little bit. You see Denning kicking back, there we go. I'd like to see Ryan do more of that chopping to the outside lower leg on Denning because it takes away a guy's movement like you wouldn't believe. It doesn't look like much, but a few kicks to that, to the low leg, the side of the shin, and it is brutal on your ability to move. Oh, Ryan rocked him. Oh, 
He wobbled him, and then it goes for a desperation shot. I'd like to see Ryan separate and get back to picking his shots. It looks like Denning has slowed down slightly. He went for several submission attempts and then got or got blasted with a few shots. He looks significantly less aggressive now. And you see not as much movement out of him, much more flat-footed now after taking four or five of those kicks on the ground. And here's where I think Ryan starts picking his shots, controlling, whoa! So Ryan just switched stances there, and I think we're gonna see another head kick. I think he's looking for the head kick finish. He switched stances to the open and again, and you can see some blood coming out of Denning's eye. And this is what I think Ryan needs to do. Keep the distance. Pick your own. Oh, whoa! Oh, this might be a finish here for Ryan the Lion Lily. Looking for the kill here at Lights Out of Street Fighting Eight. Good shots. Not a ton of damage, but he's staying on. I'd like to see him bail on this and just separate and keep hitting Denning. He's not going to get a fit. Whoa! A standing arm oh, triangle. Wow. Finished by Ryan Lily in the first round. Wow! Wow. After putting an onslaught of strikes, he finishes the fight with a submission. Yeah, I'm not sure I've ever seen Ryan finish a fight with a submission, but he was going in there and really putting it on um, Matt Denning. He blasted him with some good, good kicks on the ground, and then when he switched stances standing, we saw him blast a few kicks. Let's see what we got here on the replays from round one between Matt Denning and Ryan Lilly. Look at that cut, Mark. So these were some of those, oh, this is when he first rocked him. He stood up and blasted him. That right hand right there was the beginning of the end. It took a little bit more after that, but catching him there is eventually what started the end of this demise. Matt Denning dropping for a desperation shot. Uh, Ryan Lilly able to dig in the underhook, avoid the takedown. And here we see him put him against the cage and finish with his head and arm choke, which Denning's doing the right thing of trying to put your hand so it's like you're on a phone to alleviate some of that pressure. But Brian Lilly's just too strong for him. Another incredible finish here at LXF8. We'll step aside for a short break. We'll be right back with our official decision. Your two On Fubo Sports, let's head into the cage to Barry Egan with our official decision. Riverside, the winner, by way of the standing arm triangle tap out at 241 into round number one. Ryan Lion Lily. 
an incredibly impressive finish there by Ryan Lilly, keeping his reputation intact here at Lights Out. And with that, shortly we'll head into the cage with Sibley with our winner's post-fight interview. Congratulations, Ryan. I know I talked to you yesterday, uh, and the person that you're out here fighting for every time you get inside of uh, the cage, Claudette Gervais. Um, was she with you right. right now? That's your grandmother. Yeah, I lost my grandma. Uh, you know, she, she died of old age, and uh, she's had every kind of surgery. Nothing could kill her, you know, and uh, it was finally her time. So rest in peace, Grandma. I love you, and I'll see you soon. When you're out here like this, what does it feel like right now? I saw a smile on your face as soon as this match was over. You're the first person showing your teeth. I put in a lot of work, you know. Uh, I fought October 1st, I lost by a split decision. I, I drive an hour and a half each way just to go train one, one, one way. And uh, it's my time to go shine and put on a great performance like, like I just did. Congratulations on this win. Thank you guys, can't wait to be back, I'm ready. The co-main event of the evening featuring Willie Whoopass Gates with a record of 12 and 11. And his opponent, Musa Tolliver, makes his 23rd walk into an MMA cage with a record of 9, 12, and 1. So we have two guys with about the same amount of experience, 22, 23 fights, getting in here for our co-main event. One of the biggest differences I see is that Willie Gates has significant age over his opponent, Musa Tolliver, which I think starts to really play a role when it comes to fighting. Because your age can, you have so much mileage that your body's accumulated by training for so long. But at the same time, with that experience, comes to ex experience and an ability to learn and know how to play the game. So I'm really interested to see how the balance of taking mileage versus intelligence comes out for Willie Gates, because I think he needs to play an intelligent fight against the younger, more athletic Musa Tolliver, who also trains at a great camp with great teammates. So he's not going to be any slouch for Willie Whoopass Gates inside of this co main event here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 8. With a nickname like Whoopass, you can't be a slouch in this cage, not at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We'll step aside for a short break, and when we get back, we will go on to the co main event of the evening here at Lights Out. Fubo TV here at LXF8. The return will be going into the co-main event here shortly. 
Yeah, I'm excited for this co-main event and main event, Mark. Former NFL stars TJ Hushimazada and Orlando Skendrick make sense of the weekend's NFL action every week on YouTube. This week, they'll be catching up with a special time Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, reacting to the Monday night's wildcard matchup between Tom Brady and Dak Prescott. Check it out Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. The co-main event of the evening featuring Willie Whoopass Gates with a record of 12 and 11 and his opponent, Musa Tolliver, making his 21st walk as a professional mixed martial artist. Once those doors closes, referee asks, are you ready? You better be ready. It's my job, you know what I'm saying? My style is kind of like, Freestyle, more focused on the jiu-jitsu and wrestling aspect right now. I was more known for my striking, but as I got older, try to evolve, I'm just go out there and do me 15 minutes of fun. Just as long as I get my hand raised at the end. That's all I'm worried about right now. Willie Gates, yeah, he's a tough fighter, good striker, very durable. You know, I just like to go out there with a strategy, try to be the smarter fighter out there. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take him down. I'm pretty sure he's gonna stand back up. We're gonna fight it out throw some fists. Once that cage closes, it's on. So ready to go to war, ready to go to the hospital, <laughs> ready to fight. You know, I predict that I'm gonna win. Knockout, submission, decision, forever. Blake, it is an exciting co-main event ahead of us. We'll step aside for a short break. When we get back, the co-main event of the evening right here on Lights Out Extreme Fighting 8 on Fubo.tv. Angeles area, Riverside Municipal Auditorium. You're watching Lights Out, Extreme Fighting 8, The Return on Fubo.tv. We're heading into the co-main of, of the evening. Willie Wopass Gates makes his way out to the cage right now. Let's go Lights Out. Willie Wopass Gates with quite the look here tonight. All orange sweatsuit and the grayed out beard. What's your thoughts on that, Blake? 
The man has got style. So I'm expecting him to come in here and fight with some style too. He said he's coming in here to have fun for 15 minutes and get his hand raised. And you can tell by the way he's got his hair and his entire look, the way he carries himself, the way he talks, and hopefully the way he fights. Entertaining Willie whoop ass Gates. Thus far, a quite an easy night for the judges. We haven't had to hear from them that yet, and hopefully we don't have to. We've had all finishes here at LXF Fate the Return, and uh, maybe we can see some more of that action here tonight. Yeah, you know, my coach always tells me to make the night easy for the judges and not even make them work. Get in there and turn someone's lights out so the judges can just sit back with some popcorn and enjoy the show. And with due diligence behind him, Gates is in the cage and will now see Musa Tolliver make his way down the aisle. Tolliver makes his way down the aisle, looking mean as well with his own pair of sweatpants. It's kind of cold in here. I don't blame them. I and mean, it's not easy to get warmed up in a cold auditorium like this where your hands are cold, your feet are cold. So guys coming out in sweatpants, keeping it warm. So when they get in that cage and they're just wearing that leotard, yeah, the only part back. of you that you want to be cold when you step inside of the lights out cage is your heart. You need to be ready to get in there and do something ruthless. And you can tell by the serious look on Musa Tolliver's face that he is here for business. Willie Gates said he's coming to have fun. Musa Tolliver said he's coming for war. And I think that is a massive advantage when a guy is coming to fight and hurt his opponent. First one, a guy just stepping inside the cage to get in the cage and have some fun. Also, Musa Taller had a much more detailed explanation of how he thought he was going to win. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go for takedowns. I'm going to land some ground up pounds. Blah, blah, blah. I have a variety of different things. Where well, Willie said, I'm coming to have some fun. And you can tell that that face right there means business. And those ears, the way they're torn up, definitely has a solid ground game because Musa Tolliver. And with that said, let's take a look at the tail of the tape here. So as I mentioned earlier, wow, there is an age differential in the other direction that I, I thought it would have been the other way around. Another big difference we see here, 147.2 for Wade and Moose Tolliver, 145 for Willie Gates. Not a massive difference, but it makes me wonder if Moose Tolliver wasn't able to get to 145 and had a tough cut, and what that might play into in terms of his conditioning. We'll find out in a second. And let's go to the man with the velvety voice, Barry Egan. Riverside, here we go. This is the co-main event of the evening. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. The man in charge of the action, one of the best house, Jonathan Romero. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner to my right, wearing the gray trucks with the green trim. He weighed in at 145 pounds even, fighting in his 24th professional fight. Here is Willie Whoopass Gates. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner to my left, wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 147.2 pounds, fighting his 23rd professional fight. Please welcome Musa Tolliver. This featherweight bout scheduled for three five-minute rounds at LXF8, live on Fubo.tv. Look out for all the LXF Lights Out Extreme Fighting events on Fubo.tv all throughout 2023. Ever since uh, Corners got out of the cage, which is essentially right before the fight starts, you can see Musa Tolliver just staring at Willie Gates. Willie Gates pacing back and forth and breathing. Is he nervous? I don't think nervous, but I don't see the same killer instinct in his eye that I see out of a Musa Tolliver who said he's coming for war. And a Willie Gates who said he's here for fun. Does that mean everything? It doesn't. But I, like I said, I think mindset is one of the biggest things, that, biggest advantages you can have stepping inside of the competition ground. Yeah, a lot of deep breaths out of Willie Gates. It's making me wonder if he's nervous or if he had a tough, or no, it was Oliver who was a little overweight. It looks like we have some delays there getting the cage door closed and locked, and it looks like we are ready to go underway. This one in the featherweight division. Come out, touch the gloves. First thing I noticed, 
Uh, Willie Gates is southpaw, meaning his right leg's forward. Musa Tolliver's left leg is forward, which means there's an open stance. The power side is on the same side for both guys. Whoa! Big jumping knee by Willie Gates. Explosive athleticism, but Musa Tolliver catches his hips on the way out and gets the takedown, but Willie Gates is not settling in bottom position. You see him trying to wiggle his feet or wiggle his hips back and wall walk up the cage. But Musa Tolliver's doing a fantastic job of keeping his hips. You can see him stepping over trying to trap the legs, a la Khabib Nurmagomedov of the UFC. Oh, he's got it now. These The Dagestani wrestlers use this tremendously in the UFC and, and other mixed martial arts competition. He might even be looking for a knee bar here. I would like to see him just try and keep climbing up the body to a mount position. Willie Gates doing a fantastic job of continually sliding his hips back and trying to get up. You see him trying to use his shoulders to walk up the cage. It's the exact right thing he should do, but Musa Tolliver is attached to his hips and not letting him go anywhere. Fantastic control thus far by Musa Tolliver. I'd like to see him pop, put his hips in a little more and start throwing some strikes from this top position like this. Heavy hips, rest your hips in on the guy's shins so he gets trapped in this position. Then start blasting and then control the position again. Because when you start to strike, you lose control of your opponent. So you've got to do some damage. And again, he's looking for this step over. When he gets this here, Willie is now trapped in this position. And if um, Tolliver's able to continue to hit forward and almost inch up, he could slide himself all the way to the mount position, which we have seen many, many fights in mixed martial arts end in. Musa Tolliver, extremely patient here too. Forcing Willie Gates to move his weight and then explode dramatically to try and attempt an escape. But every time he gets out, we're seeing Musa Tolliver reattach the hips, suck the hips off the wall, and try and put Willie back on his back. But Willie is not accepting the takedown. Continually fighting to his feet. Oh, looks like he's wrapping up a double wrist lock here. If he's able to get Musa Tolliver's left hand behind his back, I can't, so you can see Bruce, or, uh, Willie Gates' left arm is wrapped around the left arm. Oh, a foot stomp. Those are brutal and totally underused to mixed martial arts. Ow. Especially if you're trying to distract your opponent just long enough to rip his wrist behind his back. And that hurts. The ball of the heel down on the tippy of the toes, that's got to be destructive. Yes, yeah, so Willie Gates has bailed on the double wrist lock attempt, and now Musa Taller drops back to the hips and secures fourth or fifth takedown of the fight. But Willie Gates again, scooting his hips back, trying to get his back to the cage so he can wall walk up. Musa Tolliver is expending almost no energy here besides getting the takedown. He's using great leverage and points to get a controlling dominant position. Ooh, that was a great elbow from Willie Gates there. I'd like to see Musa turn Willie horizontally so instead of his back being on the cage, you turn him to one of his sides is like this. And you're able to really but Willie doesn't want to be there. He knows he doesn't. That's why Willie is continually fighting those feet. He knows if he settles underneath Musa, Musa Tolliver, it is going to be a rough next 90 seconds. And Musa just riding him. So much weight on Willie's back. Willie's expending a ton of energy here, even though it doesn't look like it. And back to the hips again. I bet he sucks his hips out. And secure, oh, he's got double underhooks, which will give him a lot more. Oh, then Willie Gates pummels inside. Willie needs to get his back off of this cage and utilize his footwork to prevent himself from being trapped between Tolliver and the cage. Yes, just like this. He needs to stuff the head down here because every time he tries to stay on the cage, eventually Musitar, every time he stays on the cage, whoa, was that a jumping knee? I didn't get a catch there. You see, this is where I think he needs to move out. Oh! Oh! This is where Musa, um, uh, Willie Gates wants to have the fight. Whoa, oh, a straight right. right. Great kick, too. But see, now his back's against the cage again, and I think we're going to continue to see this. Every time Willie's back gets on the cage, Musa Tolliver takes him down, and systematically, you see him step that leg over every chance that he gets. Willie Gates is getting wise to him, keeping his legs back now, so Musa Tolliver's not able to grab his legs. Moose is driving that shoulder into Willie's chest, so trapping him between the cage and the, and the ground in his body. Again, like I said, systematically gets top position, tries to step over that leg. Willie Gates does not have his half guard closed here, but I think this is a better position right now for Musa because a half guard is harder, in my opinion, to get up from than a side control type position. But again, Willie Gates is not willing to accept the takedown and continues to fight to his feet despite it taking a ton of energy and repeatedly happening.
Ooh, those are big shots to the thigh right there. They might not get you a knockout, but they're gonna wear you down and hurt your ability to move. And I think the biggest thing that Willie needs to do in this next round is move. He needs to utilize footwork and prevent his back from being put against the cage. Let's take a look at our replays here at LXF8 on live on Fubo TV. So this jumping knee that started things off, almost all inches from knockout. Musa Tolliver gets the takedown though, and this is where we've seen the majority of this fight thus far. Willie Gates back against the cage as Musa Tolliver rides him and tries to flatten him out. Musa, uh, um, Willie Gates doing a fantastic job of trying to get his back to the cage and fighting back to his feet, but you are not winning fights on the defense here. Tolliver doing a very good job of not allowing Gates to get out of those grappling positions, not allowing him to separate. No matter where where Willie gets to, it just does he's just not able to get out I, of that position. I agree 100 percent Every time he gets him on the cage, he eventually makes his way down to Willie's hips and drags him to the to the ground. And then it's a rough time for Willie underneath. Willie needs to utilize his footwork. Yeah, man, Tolliver's face looks pretty messed up. I hope they give us another shot. I'm not even sure what strikes caused that damage. But I'd like to see Willie move. He cannot move forward Round too much like this. Number two underway here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting live from the Riverside Municipal Auditorium. So I think all this forward motion out of Willie Gates is a bad thing because you're bringing your hips closer to your opponent. And the thing he needs to prevent is Tolliver on his hips. He moves forward, Tolliver changes levels, shoots in, and now has Willie's back against the cage with almost an entire round left on the clock. And not just that, but now Musa is taking Willie Gates down right in his corner where all his coaches are giving him instruction. Willie's now wised up as well to pressure on the head for Tolliver. Tolliver gets here, you jam his head down, make, breaking his posture. Makes it extremely hard for him to climb up to a more offensive position. And again, we see him, as I mentioned in round one, systematically getting the takedown against the cage, stepping over and wrapping up both legs, as you can see. Willie Gates escapes his legs, but is still in this position. And just going from the pan to the fire, pan to the fire. He needs to create space and a scramble right here. You can see him getting his right arm under hook to try and get the head up a little. It's going to create a little space for him to wiggle around and get his hips out. Toller's continuing to readjust based upon these movements that Willie's giving him, though. Willie Gates still has not figured out this puzzle just yet. Still on his back and not in the position where he needs to be, where he can throw those strikes it where looks, he's in his wheelhouse. It looks like Willie Gates' left arm is trapped behind his back here, which is a terrible position to be in on the bottom. It looks like he's sitting up more straight. Oh, now he's getting put down to the other side. But now you can see Willie Gates' back and shoulders on the ground. This is one of the most dominant being, you can all see Tolliver sliding closer up the mount. This is probably the most dominant top position we've seen thus far out of Tolliver. And it wouldn't surprise me if he continues to get these takedowns that we eventually see him get to a dominant position where he's able to finish the fight with strikes. But Willie Gates is calm, nodding chill not super worried about it. he's not taking a ton of damage but he's getting ground on and he is losing this fight in this position even though he's not getting beat up per se he's doing a great job of continuing to fight to his feet though it almost looks like they're talking they're right here in front of our commentary booth and it almost looks like there's some exchanges of words in there so now we're as i was saying in the round one Willie Gates is doing a good job of getting his back to the cage or fighting back up, but he almost got flattened there all the way on his back. Once you get a guy's back flat on the ground, it makes it so much harder to get up. Willie is doing a great job of preventing himself from getting there, but he needs to do a better job of preventing himself from even being wrapped up in this type of position. And the way he does that is footwork once there's been a disengagement. Well, right here, he needs to scramble, pop his hips back and forth and circle out. Tolliver S grips under the hips, and Willie's about to go for another ride. I hope Willie's getting some frequent flyer miles for all these times. He is getting tossed around by Musa Tolliver right now. And Musa's taking his time. He's not rushed in. He's in deep on that. I'd like to see Willie rip that left arm up over. Because right now, Tolliver's chilling. This is the time for Willie Gates to escape. He needs to do something dramatic here to change the story of this second round. 
Tolliver back down, drops, readjusts his hands, and trying to get Willie Gates' hips out, and he gets it again. Tolliver is relentless with the takedowns in this fight. He has to be. He's winning this fight very handily, in my opinion, utilizing these takedowns. He might not be doing a ton of damage, but he has a ton of ground control or time of controlling this fight. Willie really has got to do something dramatic here. I'd like to see him turn and explode and turn to his left and face Tolliver and try to dig it. You can see he's digging it for the underhook. He needs to do something drastic to escape this. Here, here, stuff the head, stuff the head. Shake your hips, shake your hips and try and pop out. But Tolliver, once he gets under those hips, it's so hard when the guy gets here, shoulder into your pelvis and hands as gripped under your butt to escape. The guy really, oh. But Willie has a moment here. The hands are now open, and his hips are not. Oh, that was a very sneaky knee from the inside. And that's Tolliver really... will need to be very careful there. He's putting his head right there in position to get need. And another takedown by Tolliver, the story of the fight. So he take down, and then Willie Gates immediately scoots his butt back to put himself against the cage and start fighting his feet again for maybe the seventh time in this fight. We also see Musa Tolliver wrapping the legs up of Willie Gates, where his legs are stuck underneath, and he's basically stuck in this position. And there's why change the game plan if you're Musa Tolliver? It's working. If, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But where is his cardio as we creep up on the last 10 seconds of this fight? Where is Tolliver's cardio? Because it seems like he's really slowed down nearing the end of the second round. How much longer is he going to be able to put on that relentless takedown before he's just out of gas? Because the last 30 seconds or so of that second round, not a whole lot to show for him. There has been a ton of ground control thus far by Tolliver. Takedown after takedown. Here's another one in the replay. That was the story of round one and round two. Grinding on top of Willie Gates nonstop, making him grind. Work, not necessarily doing a ton of damage, but he's getting on top. Takedowns, creating some damage, getting on his back almost. He has been grinding Willie Gates down. And I am shocked at how much cardio looks like Willie Gates has. And it's Tolliver who's actually the one slowing down. But I'll be honest, Mark, it's exhausting whipping somebody's butt. And it's exhausting getting your butt whooped. So I am shocked that both of these guys have as much cardio as they have. Not that, not that, um, Well, you can Willie see Gates, Gates, on, Gates on his feet during the break. And Tolliver's still sitting down after the whistle. So that may be a little bit of a forecast. What we might see here in the third round is Gates going to step it up. Gates needs to utilize his footwork, not move, not be too aggressive with his forward motion and making it easy to take down. He needs to get in the middle of the cage, hold his ground, or back up and circle. He needs to avoid moving forward. And I think another thing worth notice, noting about Tolliver slowing down, he was two and a half pounds overweight. Did he have a really tough weight cut? Third and final round here in this scheduled three five minute round fight. And again, Willie Gates moving forward, which is not recommended by me. I'd like to see him start standing at range and chopping leg kicks. See, that's why I don't recommend a guy moving forward as he walked into this takedown. He needs to do something dramatic here. Don't just fight this. You need to pull that head up, shimmy your, hip, shimmy your hips back and forth, and explode out of this position. Because when you play the slow grind game against Tolliver here, continually for the last 10 minutes, he's gotten taken down and ground on himself. He needs to do something dramatic here. I have them. I believe that Willie Gates is losing this fight, maybe even 17 to 20. That last round might have been a 10-8 with the amount of control. Maybe not because there wasn't a ton of damage. But Willie needs to stop fighting the exact same fight, which is his back on the cage. And the way to do that is once he creates space, he near, he needs to separate and back up. Oh, and then they're trading. And Willie Gates getting back into this fight here. This is where he wants to be. He wants to be on his feet, trading shots with this man here in the third round. Exactly. So again, a little more distance there with the shot. But now you can see Willie, Willie Gates is actually able to dig an underhook in. The takedown's not as deep as it had been since he had been standing still or moving forward. Oh, and a counter oh, there. And now by Gates on top. Him down. Promising moments for Willie Gates. And so here's something about being exhausted. It really changes your desire to win. And, and now Gates is raining down shots. This one is turned. Oh my God, the tables have turned. The tables have turned, Blake. Bro, this 
This is what happens when guys get tired, though. When you lose your cardio, you lose a lot of your will to fight. Fatigue makes cowards out of men. And I'm not saying Musatov is a coward or tired, but Willie Gates looks like he has more in the tank right now, and he wants it that much more. As originally suspected at the end of the second round, and Gates has almost a, a three minutes to work here. He has plenty of time to try to make that ground and pound work. He already landed some good shots on the way down. So, you know, to be honest, my opinion, if I was Willie Gates, I'd separate him back. Get up, tired, dude, because his arms are going to be tired. His movement's going to be labored. And here, who knows if Charles is able to get a sweep and end up in top position. I would want no part of the grappling game if I was him. It's very I good point. separate here, watch double underhooks, counter takedown. I would have stood up and separated if I was Willie. You're tired, bro? Get up, I'm going to punch you in the face. And here, Willie needs to explode. So because there's an underhook on one side, Willie needs to explode to his left side. There, right now, now's his time to escape. Deep oh, into the third great round elbow here. from the inside. We are in deep waters here. Both men fighting for pride. So Willie Gates, is, he needs to find, capitalize on a moment to get off of the cage. Ooh, great elbow there. There's two minutes left in the round. He had an amazing moment at about the three-minute mark, but we're back to the same story. He needs to get off the cage here, here. But he pauses, he's tired, and as soon as two taller, or as soon as Musa Tolliver is able to wrap him up and get down to the hips, he's going to again. What a, I'm really impressed by Willie Gates finding a moment and really trying to look for the finish. Because sometimes when guys get beat up for two rounds or, or ground on for two rounds, they don't really have a whole lot in round three. But Willie Gates has not stopped fighting. He hasn't, he's been trying to open a can of whoop ass this whole fight, Mark. Tolliver trying to hang on to this thing. He knows it almost slipped out of his hands. And there is a statement to the judges that he's still in this fight. And he stepped over the legs. And now this time they're a little bit further away from the cage than they've been the majority of the times. Let's go, oh, but Willie Gates looks like he's looking for a double wrist lock on the left arm of Lucy, uh, Musa Tolliver. No, he gave it up. Willie's got a stare. We go. Willie's scooting his back, uh, scooting his butt back again, so we can get his back to the cage and start to stand up. We are nearing the one-minute mark in the third and final round here in the featherweight division. And by God, he's a featherweight. That is one thick, muscular featherweight. You know that might be a reason why his conditioning's been a little bit challenged here in the third round by cutting a lot of weight. Like, I used to cut a lot of weight, and it put handcuffs on my ability to perform in rounds two and three. And maybe we're seeing something similar here. Oh, he's got his back now. Let's see if he gets the hooks in. He's got Willie, one in. Willie Gates did a good job Doesn't of rolling really over. But let's see if he can get to mount now. If he can, the right knee looks like it's partway through it. Oh, no, it's not. Willie Gates does not have his half guard closed, meaning his legs aren't tangled up. Under 30 seconds left in this fight. Gates really needs to get out of this and try to make something happen. Otherwise, this is probably going to lean into the side I mean, of Musa Tolliver. Yeah, I think Gates needs a Hail Mary at this point because I have, I would have judged it 2017 going into the third round thus oh, far. no, but in the last second seconds, it looks like it's all Hail and no Mary. And now Musa Tolliver looking to maybe try and get the finish here with the last few seconds of the third round. And that was important for him to do so that he can have a nice clean sweep. Most likely a unanimous decision here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree a unanimous decision here for Musa Tolliver, who had a fantastic dominant performance. We didn't necessarily see a ton out of him, but it's because the things he were do was doing were working. So why change it? And this was an action pack, went all the distance. Let's see these action replays. Yeah, these dudes, this is the, the exchanges that we saw in the second one. And here's where Willie found his moment. A tie, ripped the underhook over and got on top of a tired Musa Tolliver and landed some decent shots until Musa was able to turn the tides, put Willie's back against the cage and secure the takedown that ended up winning him the fight. And we're going to step aside for a short break. You're watching LXF8, The Return, live on Fubo TV. I'm Mark Charles. Blake Troop is right next to me. We'll be right back with the official.
Welcome back to LFX 8. The last fight in the featherweight division goes the distance. Let's go to Barry Eager with our official decision from our judges. Riverside, how about a big round of applause for these two valiant warriors. Call it the fight of the night so far. To the scorecards we go. Judge Frank Trigg scores about 29, 28, Tolliver. Judge Raphael Davis scores about 29, 28, Gates. Judge Chris Lieben scores about 29 to 28 for the winner. By way of split decision, Musa Tolliver. That was a close one. I, I, I thought we were about to be surprised. Gates. That was definitely a very close call there. I'm not sure how one of those judges saw it, 29-28 for Willie Gates. Granted, I understand some, sometimes it goes that way, but I just don't see how that happened. Let's head back into the cage with Sibley. Hey, guys. All right, we're here. The winner of that fight. I talked to you yesterday about coming in here. You said, I, I asked you specifically, you want to put on a show or you want to take this? Obviously, you want the win. You said that's what matters the most. You're a selfish fighter. You're doing it for you. What is the thoughts? Uh, I'm just happy. All in God's glory. I'm very happy. Thank you, God. Thank you for everyone for coming out, my team. Uh, I'm just really happy. Thank you. When it comes to a split decision like that, what's going through your mind as they're reading out? Uh, just hoping that they call my name last, but I'm very thankful. So that's all that matters right now. I'll let you catch your breath. Riverside, give it up one more time. Lucy Tolliver, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, and I want to talk to Willie. Willie, give it up for Willie one more time, Riverside. I spoke to you as well. 2023 made 15 years of your career for fighting this year. You put the gloves down. Can you let everyone ex explain to everyone what that means? Uh, man, uh, I've been doing this a long time. I love it. Uh, it's like 15 years now. Um, I just feel like I've done enough. I've fought in every organization. I've been champions in other organizations. I'm about to be 36 years old. Um, I've done enough. Um, next stage of my life is I'm being a comedian, so that's what I'm doing now. I found something to replace the love that I have for MMA, and that's doing stand-up, so I'm gonna pursue that from now on. I like that, and you also told me yesterday that you want to put on a show and entertain, so this makes sense. Another way of entertaining you guys. I'm uh, making you guys laugh now. Is your family or anybody here that you want to shout out? Yeah, I got my uh, fiance, uh, my sisters, my brother-in-law. Uh, I love you guys, thank you guys for being here. Even though you guys was late, but hey, I, I want to thank uh, Sean Marion for giving me a chance uh, to perform for you guys. I love you guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Enjoy the retirement and good luck on the next chapter. Back to you guys. We'll now head into a much anticipated main event of our evening where the nine and four Riverside Warrior, Marvin Garcia steps into the cage with 13 and 13, Willow the Pharaoh Watson. So in our main event, we have Marvin, the Riverside Warrior Garcia against Walio, the Pharaoh Watson. And it really looks like the taller striker against the shorter grappler. I watched both guys warm up and move around. I think the keys to victory for Willow, keep straight attacks, long range attacks, utilizing footwork and cutting angles. And I believe Marvin Garcia's keys to success, utilizing head movement, throwing hands and trying to get inside and drop for the takedown and put Willow on his back. You have, check, like I said, grappler versus striker. Can the smaller guy get in on the bigger guy? Is the bigger guy going to have the wheels to avoid the damage? Let's find out in our main event. And with that said, this story continues with Marvin Garcia 
Yeah, let's go to Sibley to help us tell that story. That's right, as you said, we are in Riverside. Marvin Garcia will be up here for our main event. Riverside, make some noise right now. Your guy will be up here. I was talking to him and his wife yesterday. It got emotional as they were talking about what it means to be here and to represent for the city that he is from. So look forward to that main event coming up. All right, guys, stay tuned right here. Lights out, extreme fighting. Hey, Sibley. We are going to step aside for a short break, but Blake, when we return, the main event of the evening here on Lights Out. The main event is ahead of us in just a few moments. Tomorrow night, the Orlando Magic's RJ Hampton gives a unique perspective on life in the NBA as a teenager. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fubo Sports. And you can catch previous episodes, including his interview with number one pick, Paolo Banquero, on YouTube. All right, Blake, the main event of the evening. We've been waiting for this one. We've been waiting all night, and now we have it. Marvin Garcia versus Willow Watson. Yeah, you got the hometown killer against the new guy. I was born and raised here. Gotta be tough to live here. It builds people, I guess. You know, it builds character, gives them some grit. I have a lot of love and support. I do good, so I got a great following. I try to put on a good show for them. I push the fight, I push the pace. Man, I wrestled all my life. I'm a grappler, I'm a scrappy little dude. Painters get good by painting, you know what I mean? Fighters get good by fighting. My whole career, I've always been the outsider. Everywhere I go, I've never been brought anywhere to win. I'm always being brought into some guy's hometown where he's the hero and they want him to triumph over me. So I feed off of that. I feed off when the crowd is booing me. I feed off when the crowd is cheering him. You know, he's a big guy out here. People know who he is, so I'm expecting him to have a good crowd. and. I've always had my eye on him. I mean, now it's that collision course, you can't stop it this time, so we're ready to go. If anybody knows anything about YL Watson and anything that I've ever done in the cage, I bring it. I've never delivered a boring fight. I live by the sword, I die by the sword. So I'm gonna go out there, it's gonna be action packed from the moment that bell dings until the referee's pulling one of us off each other. It is what it is, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I just wanna put on a good show for everybody that comes out. I love you guys, Riverside. It's gonna be lights out. You guys are gonna see. <laughs> Bulletproof, it is exciting. The excitement is growing here at the Riverside Municipal Auditorium. We'll take a short break here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We return with the main event of the evening.
lights out Extreme Fighting 8, the return, and the return has been explosive. Let's get our first fighter walking out, Marvin the Riverside Warrior Garcia. So we have Marvin, the Riverside Warrior Garcia, coming out. And moments ago, before he made his way through the curtain, the crowd was chanting, Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. Riverside is ready to watch the Riverside Warrior Blake, get back inside the cage. I'm not here cage. to take the air out of anyone's blue, but Riverside's not getting in the cage. Marvin Garcia is going to get the cage. So let's all keep that in mind here tonight. Marvin Garcia has a uphill battle in front of him with a 20. This is the 27th time that Willow Watson will walk into a pro cage. So you can't really just look at the record. The experience is going to play into this. So Garcia is not going, to, not going to just be a cakewalk for him. This is going to be a fight. You know, I can barely hear you over the crowd shouting Marvin, even though you don't think it means much. The energy in the room and having all these people behind you really brings something out of a fighter. I'm a guy who sells a lot of tickets, and knowing I got 100 people there screaming my name, or anytime I do anything cool, makes me, it brings it out of me. But on the other side of it, Willell Watson, he's used to being the out-of-town guy. He feeds off that. And I can feel that as well because I was the out-of-town. Oh, man, Riverside's going crazy for the Riverside Warrior, Marvin Garcia. A vocal explosion here at the Riverside Auditorium. And now Willell the Foro Watson will make his way down to the LXF cage for his first fight here at Lights Out. Yeah, looking very loose, coming out, got his hands moving a little bit. He looks like he's coming here to fight. I can see Marvin looking around, waving around to people in the crowd. He has got to keep his head in the game because, like you said, it's only him inside of that cage, and he needs to be thinking about this fight because the only thing on Waleo Watson's mind right now is getting in and punching Marvin in the face, and you can see it in this serious look on Wallow's face. This is going to be a barn burner, Mark. The last time we'll see due diligence for a fighter getting into the cage here. It's main event time, and the crowd has not stopped making it the noise here in this place since Marvin made his way out. Even while his opponent was walking out, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. This place is ready to explode. You know, just like any sporting event, I feel like there's an energy in the room that is palpable. And right now, again, another Marvin chant. The energy, the people in the room are ready to watch the Riverside Warrior come home with another W. But is Waleo Watson, the Pharaoh, going to let him do it? It's about time to find out, Mark. With that said, let's see what it looks like on paper and take a look at the tail of the tape. Waleo looks very loose. So here we go with the tail of the tape. Age, very similar, but the big, big difference is the height. A seven-inch height advantage for Waleo Watson. And you can tell, not only does he have a long frame, but he's got long arms. A much stockier Marvin Garcia faced him on the other side of the cage. This is a perfect example of a taller fighter with longer reach and a shorter fighter that wants to get in and grapple. I am looking forward to seeing how Waleo is able to avoid the forward pressure of Marvin Garcia. With that said, let's get our main event introduction from Barry Egan. Side, here we go. This is the fight you've all been waiting for. The main event of the evening scheduled for three five minute rounds in the featherweight division. The man in charge of the action, what's the bell sounds? Mr. Frank Trigg. Are you ready? Riverside, are you ready? To all of the fight fans here tonight at the beautiful Riverside Municipal Auditorium, and for all of those watching around the world at Fubo.tv. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to throw down! Introducing first 
fighting out of the blue corner to my right, wearing the black trucks. He weighed in at 147.4 pounds. He has a fantastic professional record. Nine wins, only four defeats. Here is Marvin, the Riverside Warrior, Garcia. Los Angeles area Riverside and is his on opponent his fighting feet. out of the red corner of my left, also wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 146 pounds even, fighting in his 27th professional fight. Please welcome Wallel, the Pharaoh Watson. This is it, Blake. This is what we were waiting for all night, a main event. The crowd's on their feet. This one's scheduled for three five-minute rounds within the California State Mixed Martial Arts Rules. Yeah, this place is electric. The people love Marvin Garcia, and they love to hate Waleel Watson. Let's see if Waleel gives them a real reason to dislike him by putting away the hometown hero, Marvin Garcia. And it's time to go lights out. You said it, Blake. The legendary and now turned referee, Frank Trigg, ready to get the action started here in the main event. And the crowd again, Marvin Chance, you can see half of the room is on their feet. They're delaying the fight. The fight hasn't started yet because security needs to get the crowd back into their places so we can get the action started. The fight should have started. If you ask me, I don't think we should be waiting for security. They should, should have. We should be lights on already, Blake. You know, I'm not surprised with these Riverside fans with all the cheering and stuff. The show of respect. Both guys come out and touch gloves. Let's see what happens here, though. While Leo's hands are high, Marvin Garcia's are very low. Marvin has got to get his hands up and start fainting and pretending to throw some stuff to try and get on the inside. While Leo needs to stay behind that jab, just like that. Plant his feet or back up and circle out and pump out straight, long-range attacks, especially the jab. Everything I would be looking for in this fight would be behind the jab. And if he stays outside of it, I'd follow up with kicks just like Waleel did. Marvin has got to get in with some better head movement and throw some bombs to try and get in on the inside. Oh, looks like he's got his neck here. I can't see. Bro, that kid's his could be over. Oh, it's tight. He might go to sleep. That's here. tight. Bro, he's gonna get he's, he's rolling tight. with it. That is tight. I think he's gonna go lights out. He might get a, he might be sleeping. He's out! Oh! in the first 30 seconds puts the hometown hero to sleep wow wow the main event ends with the lights off for marvin garcia and now moving on with a winning record is your winner well all the feral watts an incredible moment wow. here in riverside i don't know if it's gonna be safe for walil watson to get out of this cage right now the crowd does not look happy Marvin Garcia didn't even have a chance to get started. Wow. Wow, that was incredible. We, I want to take a look at that replay. If we can get that from the producers, that'd be great. So he shot a long-range shot while Leo got one-handed and brought the other over high for a high-arm guillotine, which is probably the tightest guillotine. And when the pressure really started to work, while Leo stepped over almost like a guard-type position and ended up mounting him and getting the finish, Wow, what a major upset. Let's take a look at the replay here. We might be able to see the whole fight, but let's see what we're gonna get. So watch a long show, keep him at range. And when he's keeping him that far away, it makes it so when he wants to shoot a shot, it's at the distance. Here, you see the arm under the neck. He grabs the hand and then brings the elbow over the top high. We knew this was deep. He might even have been out right about here. While Leo goes to the guard and rolls over here. He's it not looks defending. Like his, he might be sleeping already. Uh, he's not defending. His hands he's, he's are doing trapped. nothing. His, his elbows out. are still. I mean, he's doing absolutely nothing there. He might have been out for a few seconds. But the good, well, thankfully, he got up. All right, that was an incredibly explosive main event. Lights are out for Garcia. Let's take a short break. We'll step aside. We'll come back with the official decision for our announcer.
and welcome back to LXF8. The main event is now behind us. Let's go into the cage with Barry Egan for the official decision. The winner, Riverside, by way of submission by guillotine, 53 seconds into round number one. Wallel, the Pharaoh, Watson! An incredible main event here, an incredible event, the return of lights out, extreme fighting, and an extreme success. All finishes except for one fight that went the distance in an absolute barn burner. And now let's head into the cage with Sibley for our main event's winners, post-fight interview. Wyatt Watson, by way of submission, guillotine, how do you feel right now? Oh man, I feel ecstatic. I mean, I put a lot of work into this. It's the last couple of years have been a rough ride for my career, so I needed this win badly, and I was, you know, an emotional wreck in the back, and when I came out here just getting the win right now, you know, I was overcome with that emotion, you know. It's just, this game's a tough game for us, you know, so when we put in all this work and we don't get the results we're looking for, it takes a little bit of peace of your heart every single time, so coming out here tonight and getting this win in front of my family, in front of my, my dad, my, my brother, my wife, my kids, my teammate, you know, my coach, always believes in me no matter what the results are in my bouts, you know, it, it meant a lot tonight. I know you mentioned all of that and yesterday you talked to me, your boys are here as well right now. You said you want to make sure they get to see you as they grow up, see what their dad does. How proud are you to be able to have this win tonight, the way it ended, and see them here? It's a dream come true, you know, it's the kind of stuff you see on TV all the time and, you know, it's just a blessing and I'm, I'm very blessed tonight. And, and, you know, I, my hat, my, I thank God and, you know, I thank my family and, like I said, my coaches and my team and all my supporters. Where do we see us going next after this? I don't know yet. You know, I'm, I'm going to go. I got, I got a bunch of guys fighting next week, so I got to focus on them. And, you know, we'll go after that. I'll start thinking about what my next move is. But I don't know what the next move is really going to be for me. Well, listen, enjoy it. Congratulations on the win tonight on this main event. And uh, go take your kids out and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. Riverside, give it up one more time. Our winner, main event tonight, Wyatt Watson. Thank you so much. Do we have a second, guys, Riverside? Uh, Riverside, I want to do something for a second since we are here. Marvin, I know you asked if you can have the mic, um, so I'm going to let you take it for a second. Hey, you guys, I love all you guys, man. Hey, this is what I'm here for, though. Hey, you win some, you lose some. I'm glad to keep everybody here to come together again. It feels so awesome just to hear the damn name. In my hometown in Riverside, win or fucking lose, I'm here. Excuse my language, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, I love you guys. Hey, give it up to him. Hey, whoever steps in the cage, I'll shake your hand anytime, all day. Hawaii, baby, I'm over there. Hey, I love you guys. Hey, thank you for coming out, for supporting me. All my sponsors, I love you guys. With all my heart, hey, I'll give you everything I got for you. Hey, you got me today, I win some, I lose some. You're going to take my job, Marvin. <laughs> Riverside, give it up one more time for our main event tonight to these gentlemen. Thank you both so much. Thank you all. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Sibley. What an amazing um, event, amazing main event. Congratulations, of course, to our promoter, Sean Marabin, with an extravagant event and a great vision that he has here for these fighters here in California. Yeah, we had an incredible night of fights. It was five or six finishes, one decision, and even the decision was a barn burner split decision. Wow. And in our main event, someone went, lights out. All right. It looks like we might be heading back into the cage with Sibley to speak with Sean Merriman. I believe that's what we're getting from our producers. All right, so Blake, before we get to anything else, we we want to we want to talk main event. That main event wasn't supposed to go that way. Typically, the you know shows like this, you bring the guy from out of town. It's not exactly what we'd, we'd expect. Now, Sean Merriman, the, the guy with the vision behind all of this, he is a former All-Star NFL player. He has all of the background of what professional sports is supposed to look like, and not only that, proves himself as a heavyweight. He's three and zero as a mixed martial artist. I don't want anyone to forget that. This is a man who's also proved himself in a cage himself, and, and here he is putting out this opportunity for all these fighters here in Riverside. A phenomenal return for LXF8 and 
and we'll be back in March for Lights Out Extreme Fighting 9. Now let's head back into the cage. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not heading back into the cage. I, I feel like Sibley was going to talk with... You know, Mark, with, I want to talk about what I think was probably, well, what, some of the action from tonight. Cornette coming out, getting a finish in our first round. Uh, Oliver coming out and getting another first round finish. We had a night packed full of guys coming in, scrapping and getting finishes. Ryan the Lion Lily, SoCal veteran out here.